What's up guys? Today we're trying new makeup. You know, these are some of my favorite videos to film because I mean, I just love makeup and I love trying new stuff. But today we've got a lot of drugstore ones. We have some high-end ones too, but a lot of drugstore and there's one drugstore combo that I'm currently wearing that is so good. And I, I'm just so excited to have discovered them together because it's so pretty. And I think once the secret gets out that these two are good together, it's gonna become a thing. No, I'm kidding, I don't know. I just love it. So I also want to thank today's video sponsor, which is Casetify. I've been working with them for years. It is the only phone case brand I use, truly. Casetify is the world's most well-known, I would say, tech accessory brand. They make really protective phone cases, all kinds of other stuff. They've got watch bands. They've got phone straps, which are so cute. But I love how protective they are. Our phone is super expensive. I mean, I don't even like to like think about how much our phones cost. <laughs> so making sure they're protected is super important. These cases, are incredible. They're 20% more protective. They're five times the military standard in drop protection. This is their bounce case and I love it because these raised edges mean that literally when I drop it, and I'll show you a drop test right now, when I drop these bounce cases, they literally just bounce. Like if they land on that corner, they just bounce. So protective, I'm never worried about a cracked screen or anything going wrong and I've never had any issues with it and I drop my phone daily, like most of us do. <laughs> but these bounce cases have a 21.3 foot drop protection, which is insane. But I also love how cute they are. They're super trendy, they're customizable. I'll show you some of the cases I have right now. I love that you can get things that you're into. Like if you're into reading, I love this book one that I have. They have so many different characters and artist collaborations. You can get plain colors. I'm loving my hot pink one that I have on right now. I also really like their clear cases. If you're into that really sleek look, they make really nice clear ones. But again, you can also customize it. You could have your name or monogram on them. You could have your word of the year. I love that. So I mentioned their phone straps. This one is my personal favorite. They have a lot of different ones. They even have, I have a Christmas one too. <laughs> But I wanted to show you quickly how easy it is to put it on because I, I know a lot of people keep theirs on all the time. I put mine on when I'm out grocery shopping or I'm out with the girls and I, I just, I need my phone at quick reach. So you literally just put it in through that part of the case and that's it. Then you pull it through. It's so easy to get on and off and that's kind of, for me, the, the big, Thing, you know what I mean? I don't always have the time, but because I know I don't want it on all the time, I just need it on when I'm out and about. So, and look how cute that is. Are you kidding? That goes so well with this hot pink case that I've got. But I also love their artist program. They have a lot of different collaborations with artists out there and they are some of the cutest one, so definitely worth checking out. And I think it's so cool that they support the global artist community. And they're a lot more sustainable than other brands that are out there. They have their Recasetify program. So I love that their cases are made from 65% recycled materials. I think that's so cool. You know, you get a new phone, you get a new case. It's just one of those things. So it's nice to know that this is a brand that is doing something about that. And they have 20% fewer carbon emissions. So I just think it's a cool brand. They're doing a lot of cool stuff and they actually make really well-made cases that are super protective. And when I say that when you pop on Case Device site and start scrolling, they have something for everyone. You will never run out of options. Like I said, they have different colors and patterns, but they like whatever hobby you might be into, you will find a case to go along with that. You'll probably find multiple cases. They also have like licensed characters and different collaborations too. So definitely worth checking out. If you do want to purchase something from Casetify, you can get 15% off your order by going to casetify.com slash Jessica Braun. I'll have that right at the top of the description box. Thank you so much to Casetify for sponsoring this part of the video. So now let's, as usual, go back in time and try out some makeup. <laughs> so it is afternoon mid-afternoon, I should say, around 2 p.m., and I'm feeling the afternoon sleepies. Like, I can feel <laughs> my eyes are just so tired. I We just got back yesterday from our Disney trip, and it was amazing, but it, there is something about coming home to your own bed and being able to make your own food again and, like, all of those kinds of things, and I definitely missed our coffee pot. But we're gonna wake up, all right? We're gonna wake up, we're gonna do our makeup. Um, that rhymed. How beautiful was that? <laughs> So first thing we're gonna try, first of all, this is a very mixed bag of things that we're trying. I've got a lot of drugstore stuff, a couple of high-end things sprinkled in here, like new launches I wanted to try. So one of those is this new one from Rose Ink. So it's their Solar Power Luminous SPF 30. I love the frosted glass packaging. It is, I thought it was like you pull it off and it'd be a pump. It's not, it's a like dropper like this. And so the release valve, if you will, is this top button. So 
this I was interested in because it was called a serum, but I was kind of putting it on my hand a little bit earlier. And it's, oh, that was way too much. It's definitely thicker than I would have guessed. It's still really thin. I mean, you can see how thin it is, but it's not like a serum like I think of in the traditional sense. But it's an SPF of 30, no obvious fragrance or anything like that, which I love. That's why, have you guys tried um, anything from Glow Recipe? I've actually never tried anything from them because from what I've heard, all of the products have different fruity scents. And for skincare, I can't do it. I don't know what it is, like what is my, but I just, I worry that my skin will react negatively, but I know, I know so many people love their products. So if you have a favorite from Glow Recipe that you think I would like, let me know below. Or do any of you guys feel the same? Like you feel like they're all fruity, so they smell super fruity, so then you just don't, I literally have never, I don't think I've tried anything from that brand, which is crazy because they're a super trendy brand. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on it. If there's something from the brand you think I would like. Okay, totally got off topic, no surprise there. So it's zinc oxide 14%. So we're just gonna try, I wanted to see, okay, so it says it's radiant, a radiant non-comedogenic daily sunscreen that protects skin from harmful UV rays while delivering the benefits of a powerful serum. Love that. It's 100% mineral. This lightweight daily formula provides SPF 30 protection and it melts invisibly into the skin. We're gonna, we're gonna try that. So I'm just gonna get it on my fingers to get some. I feel like I have tried so many at this point, so many facial SPFs. I definitely have favorites. I love when friends and family of mine ask because I'm always so excited to think about their skin and what I think their skin type is like and recommend something that they would like. Cause it's never the same twice what I recommend to people. Cause I try to think about, like I said, what they like, what do they typically wear makeup or no? Cause that would kind of affect the SPF I would recommend, like what looks good under makeup. One that I think I recommend more than any when it comes to wearing underneath makeup. Well, I should say I have two. I recommend the Super Goop Glow Screen because it is super glowy, it's got good ingredients, etc. And then the other one I recommend to those that maybe have more oily skin or that I know they'll wear it a lot under makeup is the Polish Choice Super Light one, the tinted one. I still love that one. Again, really great ingredients. Neither of those have ever broken me out. The reason I still, I've held back on using the e.l.f. Glowy SPF I started to wonder if that's what was making me break out a little bit, like on my chin, the perioral dermatitis, because I know some sunscreens can do that. Um, I don't think it was it. I think I may have narrowed it down. I thought it was hormonal. I think it might have been the lawless, forget the filler stuff. Most people do not have a reaction. I think that may have been it. And I got a comment from one of you guys mentioning that you heard some other YouTuber that like actually knows about sciencey stuff and ingredients that mentioned that that could cause that or cause it to flare up. And I was like, it, like an ingredient in it. So I've stopped using it and guess what? It has pretty much gone away. So I'm kind of holding off. I'm holding off on the e.l.f. stuff too in case it was that even though I don't think it was. But when I reintroduced, I hope you guys are interested in this. <laughs> when I reintroduced the Lawless Forget the Filler like lip mask and the lip glosses that you guys know I've loved for a while and used pretty much religiously. So I stopped using it, it started to get better, but at the same time I was using something my dermatologist gave me. Well, I continued to use that. I went back to using the Lawless stuff and it came back and I was like, okay. So again, you know, scientifically I'm like, Ugh. and finally, I, I really think I've narrowed it down to that. So I stopped using it and it went away and I had stopped, I finally just stopped using the dermatologist stuff because I, it was just drying it out, but it didn't seem to be, I felt like it just kept going in cycles. My point is, I just don't know. <laughs> but we're, I'm trying my own science experiments, but I, it has gone away other than I've got a few hormonal breakouts right there because it is it is that time of the month. So, or it's about to be, I should say. Where am I going with this? I don't know. Back to the sunscreen. Sorry. I know that's not what any of you guys signed up for. So it definitely is like super hydrating. Like you can see that. I don't know that I would call this radiant though. It doesn't have any detectable like shimmer, glimmer, whatever, but it definitely looks like hydrated. So there's that, I'll keep using it. I like that hydrated feel because I feel like my skin right now is really feeling dry and kind of tight. This is feeling very nice and very skin carry, which I love. And I have to say, this doesn't feel like any other sunscreen I have. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't feel like any other facial sunscreen. I don't know that you would like this if you have oily skin. Okay, moving along. 
So this next one is one that Taylor from Drugstore Maven really, really likes. I'll link her Instagram and her YouTube below. I mean, her whole thing is drugstore makeup and skincare and she gives really good recommendations and anything I've tried based on her recommendation, I've really liked. So she's one you might consider checking out. If I'm remembering right, this is one she loves. And I think I've even hauled this in a recent video, but I still haven't tried it. So we're trying it today, okay? Um, so it says to shake it up. I was just looking up on the Neutrogena site. So it says it's sheer but buildable coverage. It's, you know, fragrance-free, paraben-free, all of that kind of stuff. So it sounds like in theory it'd be a really nice product. Um, it's for sensitive skin. Yeah, formulated without fragrances, dyes, parabens, phthalates, alcohol, and sulfates. So we're going to see. See, I've already got this dirty because I've had it a while. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I have the shade Light 02. I totally guessed on the shade. So it says you can do fingers, you can do a sponge, you can do a brush. We're just gonna try fingers first. So, well, I mean, it. I have to say it blended in pretty quickly. Sometimes products like this can look really, I should say serum foundations can sometimes look really streaky and weird on me. So a lot of times when I hear serum foundation, I feel my shoulders go up because I'm like, eh, it's not gonna look good. So I think that that looks like skin, but I don't know that it did anything. Let's try it over here where I actually do have a little bit to cover up and see how it does. Obviously it's meant to be more sheer. The one thing like while I'm in this room filming, I don't have, I'm literally just using natural lighting, but I, at first I was like, oh, it's better to face the window. And it is. But the one nice thing is you're getting different kind of lighting looks at makeup, like kind of darker lighting and then the actual like window lighting. So I kind of like that because you can kind of see the way different makeup or the makeup performs on like in both versions. Okay, I put a lot more there so I felt like I had a lot more to spread. So you can kind of see, it does, again, it looks very much like natural skin. So if that is what you're looking for where it just looks slightly more perfected, it does not look like I'm wearing makeup and I think that's pretty cool. But if you're wanting a little more coverage, this might not be for you, but we're gonna try with a brush because obviously that's gonna offer more coverage especially if you just kind of like stipple it in. I'm gonna use my beloved, you can get this on Amazon, Haley's brush. It's a specific one. I use this for foundation and I have another one I use for cream bronzer and it is the best one I've tried. It's like around 14 bucks. It will last you forever. It is so good, okay. But this is one that like does not streak when you're applying foundation and I don't like foundation brushes. It's the only one I like, <laughs> but I'm just like tapping it in. Okay, wow. That looks, a lot better. So it definitely provided a little more coverage and that worked so well. So let's try it on this side. It looks really pretty. <laughs> it is not performing. I swear to you the way other serum foundations that I've tried do. This is, this is so much less streaky. I don't know what they've done right here, but the fact that I was able to apply it even with my fingers is so surprising to me. And I feel like I've tried like all of the big brands, like the Ilia one, um, that is like $40. I've tried multiple shades of that multiple years apart and I've still I like it and it can look nice But this is looking just more skin like than that one ever did and I feel like it still provided some coverage Especially especially with the brush. So I'm liking it so far. I see why Taylor really likes this different Taylor I'm not realizing that's confusing because I have like Taylor Wynn my other YouTube buddy. Anyway, also I burned my uh, forehead right here on the trip early on and like three days after, and it was not a big bad burn by any means. And so I just kind of forgot about it. But a few days after, I'm like, what is so dirty on my face? Like it looked like when you peel a barcode sticker off of something like that on my face. I was like, what happened? <laughs> and it turns out it was literally like the tiniest little bit of a scab on there and I'd gotten bronzer on it when I just apply it. Anyway, that's all. It's, it's gone now, but it just made me laugh. I could not figure out what it was. All right, I'm really enjoying the way this looks. This is not gonna be my go-to for like, I'm going out and I want my skin to look super flawless, but for every day, genuinely, I still feel like my skin looks really nice and healthy. And it was, now that I know like best way to apply is with a brush, makes it so much easier. So big fan, I feel like color-wise is a good match for me. I have a little bit of self tanner still on from the trip. So I feel like it's not perfect right this second, but regular life Jesse, perfect. So I had the shade light zero two. All right, I know I'm going slow. So this is something I'm just gonna try again because I wanna see if they've changed it at all. This is the Benefit Boing Cakeless Concealer. This is a favorite of mine from years ago. I repurchased recently. 
and I keep forgetting that I have. It's not the exact right shade that I had before that I loved, but I loved the formula because it blended in so quickly and easily. It always looked really nice. I wouldn't say that it is totally cakeless, you know what I mean? Meaning, well, I should say this. It's not totally creaseless. Wait a minute, was the old one called their creaseless concealer? Maybe this is different. I gotta, I gotta do a little research here in a sec. Cause now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, wait a minute, I really do think, wow, no, but that is really pretty too. And you saw how fast that blended in. Let me look up. No, no, it's just the cake list. So that's the same thing. I'm just in my head about it. I think I'm confusing it with the Tarte Creaseless Concealer. You guys remember that? The Maracuja one that was like super thick. Um, so, okay, it's the same thing. But yeah, I have it in the shade three, bring it. But I think I might've originally had like 3.5 or something that was just slightly different. They have these in a random order, which is very confusing. I've got to look into it, maybe look at past videos, but I really like the formula. So if you can get a nice shade match, I feel like that it blends in easily. It always looks nice. It's like medium coverage. I, I think I realize what's different. This doesn't feel quite as thick as the old one does. And I think I like that consistency just a bit better, but this is giving the same look. So, you know. All right, I'm just quickly throwing in the NYX Thick It Stick It Eyebrow Tinted gel. I always have to wipe a little bit of this off, but this is a great product. It is quick. It is easy. It's got a bigger, like if you don't like the smaller brow wands, you might like this one. It's like, well, it's definitely bigger. It's probably double the size of those, but especially for just like the quickest brow look ever, you don't feel like you need to do a lot of reshaping. This is a goodie. This is definitely more pigmented than the elf wow brow. Just FYI. All right, for eyes. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna try some shades of the Revlon Colorstay Cream Shadow. So I have two here, Praline and Caramel. Again, I've had these a while. You may have seen them in a past haul, but I haven't opened them and tried them because, you know, I'm always trying stuff. Things get pushed to the back burner. So one update on their packaging is that they have, well, if I can get it out, this little thing that comes out that's like a little brush. Isn't that interesting? And then it just goes back in here. I don't, I mean, I don't love the brush. I don't really use it, at least in recent times I've tried their products here. But so this is the shade Praline. The thing is, these are definitely really thin. So I always feel like I have to like build it up a lot, but it's really pretty. And the other shade I have is Caramel. Since we moved our stuff back from the workspace for the next few months until we move into our new workspace, a, I'll be filming here all the time, which is cool. I was already kind of filming here a lot anyway, but all of my makeup that was there is now back here. If you want to see the vlog where I show some of that process, getting the makeup and stuff, um, I can link it, but it's exciting because a lot, like even the NYX Thick It Stick It was there and I've missed it being here. But why was I saying that? I don't remember. There was a reason it was on my mind. Ooh, well. So this is definitely more bronzy, but it's still really light. So caramel's there on the top. I'm thinking we go with caramel and then maybe tap a little bit of praline on top. But I just wanna see what this looks like. This is kind of reminding me of the bad to the bronze shade. That, do they still have that shade? They might, but it definitely, I mean, this looks a lot like it. That one might've been slightly bronzier. And then to blend it into the crease, I'm just gonna get some of this on a regular eyeshadow brush and kind of use that to blend. Cause I always feel like with thin shadows like this, they can tend to blend away if you're not careful. It looks a little more dimensional than I would have guessed that it would look, which is nice. I think that makes it look a little more high end. I think the bigger complaint with these may be if you have eyes that tend to crease a lot, I, I do think these crease, but you can always put a really good eye primer underneath. The Milani one I know is like so recommended by everyone because it's good. It genuinely does the job and it's like five or six bucks depending on where you get it. So I can link the specific one I'm talking about. I really think it is a top tier one. I really just don't use eye primer. I have a strong suspicion as I get older and there's more creases, I will probably more. Right now it's not as big of an issue, so I'm just enjoying the time I've got crease free, but, and I shouldn't say crease free because things still crease, I still have, but you know what I'm saying. It's a really good one. I think that looks really nice. It just looks simple, but like I didn't try too hard, but there's that nice kind of glimmer. So I'm gonna tap, not that I need to, but just cause I have it, a little bit of this in the center. I don't know that it's really doing a ton for it. I feel like this color, the praline color could be really pretty 
just on its own, if you just want that nice like kind of beige wash with a slight shimmer, you could put it probably brow bone to lash line and it just looked really nice and shimmery and light. You know what I mean? So that's probably how I will wear this this week, but I'm definitely enjoying the caramel shade if you want just a little bit more. And I just feel like that kind of like almost wet look that's close to your skin tone is really in right now and it can look, it could just look really pretty. I, oh, liner wise, I'm just gonna use this again because I forgot I had it. It's the Makeup Forever Aqua Resist Pencil. It's a black pencil liner and you guys know me. I'm trying to make sure I'm not overheating the camera or anything. I just typically tight line-ish, tight line plus, you know, like I do it a little thicker and then I blend it with a brush and that's pretty much that's pretty much that. I'm gonna use the other side of a brow brush because half of my brushes, I don't have very many anymore, which is great. I decluttered a bunch. Okay, this is not working very well. Um, but they're all still packed in a suitcase and I don't really feel like getting it out right now. But yeah, that's pretty much what I do and then I'll get some in the waterline there. And I get questions about why I put liner in the top waterline. I feel like it makes your lashes when you put on mascara, it makes them look a little more cohesive and that there's more there at the band with your waterline being dark. And I just think it looks really nice and fluttery. So that, I mean, that's literally why. It's like it kind of gives the lash extensions look without having the lash extensions. I've never done lash extensions. I don't think I ever will. And my reasoning is simply that I am lazy. A. B. I, I don't know. I don't think I would like the way I would personally look in the lash extensions without other makeup on because they're obviously always on. I think some people can look really nice that way. I just... Don't think I would. <laughs> I don't think I'm one of those people that can pull it off. But other than that, I think they would just drive me nuts day in and day out. It's the same reason I've never done hair extensions. I am amazed. I've got friends that wear them all of the time and I'm like, it would drive me nuts, but I'm amazed at people that can do it. So more power to you if you are able to do those kinds of things and they don't bother you or really just that you have the patience to deal with upkeep and making sure you're using the right products and this, that, and the other. More power to you. I just, I can't, I can't. All right, so I'm definitely feeling like this is a little darker than this one. So let me kind of go over this line a bit. So I think this pencil is good. It definitely is more waterproof, like it doesn't transfer down. Okay, future Jessie popping in. I literally am filming close-ups and that I already wiped it away. I wish I hadn't have that liner, the Makeup Forever Aqua Resist, no. Had gotten all over my waterline and that does not happen with the Sephora one. That does not happen with the Makeup by Mario Brown one. So wanted to report it because I was like, okay, it was like, a lot so it might be somewhat waterproof but not it is not waterline approved you know what i mean it does transfer down okay that's all but the sephora one that's like 12 or 14 bucks this it's the sephora brand one it's my favorite <laughs> it has dethroned i should do a video on like makeup product favorites that have been dethroned <sighs> like four of them just came to mind because there have been recent discoveries but anyway um let me know if you'd like to see that. I can definitely do that. But what's my point here? This is what you get. Day after vacation, Jesse cannot think straight. But yeah, oh, the, the Sephora liner has dethroned them all. It's so good. It's just as waterproof as this one, if not more. And they have like a million colors too. Okay, so, but I do like it. All right, that wasn't really meant to be a review on that, Jess. I'm also gonna quickly throw on mascara. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push-Up Lashes. I have used this a million times before. It's definitely one that I do like. Um, and this is just a fresh tube. I'm comforting myself because I had meant to order the Tower 28 mascara, again, a backup of it during the Sephora sale, and I forgot. And on the very last day of the sale, which is today, the day I'm filming this, I just placed my final order for stuff, and I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot because I'd removed it from my cart for some reason, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? It is now out of stock. And so I'm like, I could have gotten a percentage off of that, my favorite mascara, and I didn't. So I was like, well, then I'm gonna open a fresh tube of this mascara, and this is gorgeous too. It can just look so fluttery and pretty straight out of the bottle, but it's very pricey. I still think that I like the Tower 28 one more, but I do really like this one. But do you see what I mean by like the darker line there, especially on the bottom, can make it all just look a little fuller, like the lashes. Also realizing this brush kind of has a similar wand to the, the L'Oreal one that's super viral. 
where it's like flat on one side where it's just product and then the other sides are like the comb. Like it's almost exactly that. I wonder, I never really, oh geez. I never really realized it. Like, were they trying to just dupe this? Maybe. For the record, I'm still loving that L'Oreal one too. I just got a big gloop of this. So we definitely need some powder because this is definitely feeling a little, um, you know, well actually, you know what, before powder, I forgot, I bought this a while back and I tried another bronzer and I forgot to open this. So this is the Milk Makeup Sculpt Stick in Toasted. This is teeny tiny. It is the full size. I laughed, I was watching Taylor Wynn's Sephora video. <laughs> she had the exact same reaction. I literally had to go back to my order and make sure like, did I order a mini? No, this is the size. Now here's the thing, in fairness to them, the big Milk bronzer stick that I'm assuming they still sell, but I don't know that, I'm assuming this is supposed to be different. Oh yeah, that's right. I think it's meant to be more like contoury shades, like gray tone. I never used up one of those sticks. So I'm like, well, maybe it's better that it's smaller. I don't, <laughs> I mean, in theory, it's not like bang for your buck, but either way. Okay, so I am just going to kind of draw it on. Ooh, boy, Jesse, what, what are you doing? <laughs> and blend it. It's definitely looking warmer tone on me than I expected. Let me, hold on. I'm starting to wonder if it's the brush. Let me use a different, I might've had bronzer on that brush. We're gonna do a clean slate over here. All right, clean brush. Well, they definitely look totally different on each side. Hmm. And I don't think it's just a lighting thing. I think it's a, the, what, whatever was on that brush. Not looking as gray tone as I thought it would, but it's blending in really easily. So that part of it, I really like. It's kind of a hybrid on my skin, which is nice because sometimes if it's too gray, it's just too gray, you know what I mean? And I know some people, are, that's the look they're going for, but you know. Yeah, I, I think this looks okay. I, I just need to try this more. I don't know. I definitely feel that this has been easier to blend than a lot of other bronzer sticks I've tried. So I, I gotta give it credit for that. Like some are just not quite emollient enough. And so you just feel like you're moving the makeup underneath around and it's so much more work to use that I'm like, oh my gosh, forget it. Why am I, I'll just use a, a powder, you know? So I appreciate that this has been really easy. I just don't know that I'm like loving it. I don't know that it's doing much. Now in fairness, I'm using this over a lower coverage foundation too. So so thinking about that, I'm like, sometimes I don't like the way bronzer looks on my skin when I don't feel like there's enough coverage on the my face as it, as it is. It can almost just look muddier based on like the redness in my cheeks that are naturally there. So I'll try this with other, I'll just try this more obviously and I'll, I'll get back to you in a speed reviews video because I just don't know how I feel. I am really liking the way that eyeshadow looks. Okie dokie. So the blush I'm gonna use is an odd one and I don't even know if it's technically a blush. So this is the Revolution Balm Glow, multi-use glow for the face. I'm certain this is meant to be a dupe for the Jones Road. Jones Road, their balm, I didn't like. I didn't understand how to use. I watched plenty of videos, even from Bobbi Brown, and I still am like, but I don't get it. Like. You put it on your face and it kind of might give some color depending on the balm. It really doesn't and it kind of adds a glow, but it's like, well, yeah, because it's kind of this emollient balm. So it just felt like one of those products. It's like, yeah, you can find a place for it in your routine, but like, was it even worth the time? <laughs> so I'm digging the packaging of this. This reminds me, is that brand Cargo still around? Remember that brand? And their packaging was like, like this, basically. I remember my roommate in college had a bunch of those products and I was like, whoa, that was an expensive brand. It still is, well, again, I don't even think it exists, but I remember so badly, like I loved getting to use her makeup. That's the whole story. Yeah, it almost feels like a lip gloss, you know what I mean? But more like a lip balm in a pot, like the Vaseline lip jellies, but not as thick. So you can kind of see it there. So you can see there's a slight tint. Let's see, apply to the cheeks and the lips for a perfect flush of color. I'll be the judge of that. Ooh. <laughs> Well, actually, so yeah, I definitely feel like I am wanting more coverage with the makeup we put on. Like, I just feel like it all looks really muddy when put together with that foundation. So I just feel like if I'm gonna go the route of the Neutrogena foundation, I want it to be like the only thing on my face with maybe a little concealer versus like trying to do these creamy type balmy makeup products on top, I just think it's a bad combo. I mean, like it's a good combo, but a bad. Like the skin can look nice, but then it just, the coloring is all odd to me. 
But again, I'll update in a speed reviews uh, once I've tried all of these more with different combinations. But continuing on, let's throw on some lip products. So this is the Revlon Colorstay Longwear Lip Liner in Nude. I have been excited. I think I've tried one other shade of this. The idea is that you pair it with like certain ones in their lines, they even tell you, which I think is kind of cool. Obviously you can use it with whatever you want, but it seems really, really creamy. That went on really easily. This is just slightly darker than my lips. It might be my perfect nude lip liner. I mean, that's pretty wild. So what I wanted to put on top of it is the Revlon Super Lustrous The Gloss in the shade Rosy Future. This just looked so pretty. Very like glossy and shimmery, but I loved that shade. Oh wow. That goes so well with that nude lip liner. Oh my gosh. It's like a 90s dream. It doesn't really have a smell, but it's like the slightest like maybe sweet, but I mean, it's really slight. Like I can't tell for sure if that's what I'm smelling or not. You know what I mean? So we need some powder up on this face here. So I have the Lawless Perfecting Powder. It's talc free. So if you notice a lot of brands are suddenly creating talc free versions of their products, which is really cool. I have Fair and Light. This was sent to me. You guys know things being sent to me um, doesn't affect how I talk about it. <laughs> Um, for example, I just talked about how the Lawless lip product that I love may be the thing that's breaking me out. I think we're gonna go light just to show you the comparison. There is fair, this one's light. I'm gonna go with light. Ooh, wow, it's got some coverage. So what does it say? It says it's perfecting powder, it's skin smoothing. Talc-free formula provides serious smoothness and polish to the skin in a medium buildable coverage. It can be used alone as your foundation or as like a setting powder. Soft matte finish. Okay, adding coverage, it can mattify. So the packaging, hold on, where did that little thing go? It's really nice. It's got like the nice packaging here, kind of looks like the Patrick Ta packaging. Um, and then this lifts up and then it's got the little place for that. So that's nice if you were like genuinely touching up on the go. So let's try the T-Zone first. Yeah, there's a good amount there. Oh my gosh, that mattified for sure. So we are definitely mattified in the T-Zone. That, I do feel like it was really smoothing. Like. Look at this region right there. Wow, let's try this on the under eye just to see, you know, let's just see what happens. Sometimes powders that are this high of coverage can look awesome on the under eye and sometimes they can look awful. Wow. Okay, so with the powder and without, that definitely made a difference. I mean, every powder would in theory make a difference, but you know what I mean? Like it really looks a lot smoother kind of reminded me of like if i had a powder version of my bare minerals concealer that's like it's a powder but it's loose this is like if i were to press that holy moly that looks really nice that instantly i feel like made my whole makeup look look so much more refined so i'm gonna get some of this and kind of tap it in this area where i just feel like it's all a little wonky maybe even tap it up just just a little bit. So I'm kind of leaving this area here alone because I do feel like that looks nice, like that glow from that balm. So, all right, wow, we talked about a lot. Let's kind of go through some thoughts here because I, I need to organize and collect my thoughts, hold on. Oh, real fast, I wanted to try this. This is one that Taylor Wynn has recommended a lot and I think this is the shade, it's the Bio Radiant Gel Powder Highlighter in Rose Quartz. It's more like a blush or blush topper. It's from House Labs. This looks so crazy to me. Like it's so, let me rephrase. I feel like it's gonna look wild on my skin tone, but it just looks cool. So I wanna, I wanna give it a try. I'm a little nervous. I'm trying to be really light handed with it cause I, I don't know. That's pretty though. Like it just, even being light handed, cause you could definitely go crazy. It definitely has, you can see it. That looks so pretty. So I think as long as you're careful with it, if you are near my skin tone, this is probably really pretty on deeper skin tones, like really pretty, but I'm enjoying it. So I'm, I'm excited to give that some more love. I wanna see it just on its own too, like not over another blush. So let me organize my thoughts here. Okay, so my top couple products out of everything I tried just to help us organize our thoughts, like I said, definitely was surprised by the powder. I love powder foundation, so it's not necessarily that it's got coverage, but just that it, it was so smoothing on the skin, but I can still see a little bit of the glow, but it definitely helped a lot where I was having a lot of just kind of unevenness. 
So that I was really a fan of and I really like how this is looking on the under eye and it doesn't look wildly like cakey or anything. It, lo it just looks nice. So that I was surprised by. And then this Revlon combo, the longwear lip liner and then their, the gloss together is, I just think it's really pretty. I love the glossy look. It's not sticky at all. Like this is not a sticky formula. I did overline my lips just a little bit on the top. I mean, you saw me do it. It was like the slightest bit. But I just feel like these together are so pretty because this is ever so slightly lighter, just a little bit than this. It is the perfect combo. So if you're wanting kind of more of a brown-ish one, this is a good one. And then I was so pleasantly surprised by the shade Caramel from the Revlon Colorstay Cream Shadows. I just feel like it looks really pretty and it was easy to do. I don't think you need to do that like lighter color in the middle, but again, I do think the lighter color would be pretty just on its own everywhere. And then everything else, like I just want more time with the Milk bronzer stick. I want more time with this. This I liked better, I have to say, than the Jones Road one. I thought like shade wise, this looked prettier. Of course, now I've got that other one on top, but I really do, I would just want more time with it. The serum foundation I think is gonna be really pretty for my like everyday, quick and easy makeup looks because I loved the way my skin looked with just this before any bronzer or anything else. And then the sunscreen I'm intrigued by. It's definitely a different texture than I'm used to, but it I feel like it looks really nice. I will be very curious to see this under higher coverage foundations. I think this will end up looking really nice because it is super hydrating. I think it was genuinely probably too hydrating to combine with the Neutrogena. And then of course I am still enjoying this. I'm excited from House Labs that is excited to give this some more love. And then everything else I had already tried in the past, like the liner, the mascara, the concealer, stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed. Again, if you want to check out Casetify, you can go to casetify.com slash Jessica Braun to get 15% off your order. I will have the link and information right at the top of the description box for you guys. And thank you again to Casetify, of course, for sponsoring a part of this video. Also, if you enjoy the style of video and you haven't subscribed, I would love if you subscribed. I obviously do sit down videos like this. I also do vlogs a couple times a month, which I really enjoy. I know a lot of you guys love them too. So thank you so much for the support. Um, but yeah, subscribe, join our little family. That means you'll get to see when I upload new videos. It will be in your subscription feed. It might be more likely to be on your homepage when you go to youtube.com or you open your YouTube app. And it helps me out so much too. So thank you ahead of time. And if you wanna watch more videos like this, I'll link my playlist of all of my trying new makeup videos. And like I mentioned, I kinda of mentioned it quickly, but I do speed reviews videos. So in a month or two after trying a bunch of new products, I share my more official deep reviews, you know, after I've tried them in multiple ways. Um, I have one coming up very soon for a lot of products I've tried recently. And so yeah, if you wanna see those, I can link my speed reviews playlist too. I've given you all kinds of content to watch if you want to. Anyway, I will see you guys in my next one, bye.